Use the quadratic formula to solve each equation, round to three decimals if necessary. All right. So um, again, if you can factor this, you probably want to factor it because it's just going to be way faster. But if you can't figure out the numbers or if it's impossible to factor, which happens, you could use the quadratic formula. You could also use completing the square as discussed in the last video, but quadratic formula is a second option. So you're going to need to write this down, write down the formula. Quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. Let's try that again. Minus 4ac all over 2a. And those, uh, you know, you use that formula and that'll give you the solutions. Those numbers are the numbers in the quadratic equation right there, the quadratic formula. You've got a, b, and c in that order. So we don't need to write that down. You should, you should just know that those are going to be A, B, and C. So just use the formula and plug them in. This says negative B. So it's going to be negative 10 plus or minus square root. And B squared, B is 10, so B squared, 10 squared is 100, minus... 4 times a is 1. Notice, notice it, doesn't, it doesn't appear there, but when there's nothing there, we know it's 1. And c is negative 11. All that is over 2 times a, like that. So use a calculator if you need to, but the first thing I'm doing is inside that square root. We're going to have 100 minus 4 times 1 times negative 11, 144. Inside the square root right there is 144. So we need to calculate the square root of 144. You should know that that's 12. So let's let's go ahead and, and rewrite. We have, oh, let's do it over here, negative 10 plus or minus, the square root of 144 is 12 over 2 times 1 is 2. So at this point, we have our plus or minus, so that's where I branch it off. The top branch is what you get when you add. Negative 10 plus 12 is 2. Don't forget the denominator is over 2, and that gives me 1. The bottom branch is what you get when you subtract. Negative 10 minus 12 is negative 22. Over 2 is negative 11. When it turns into nice answers like that, that means you could have factored. So I probably would have. I bet that would have been faster. Number 13. This is the first one where we wouldn't be able to factor it. So we do negative B plus or minus square root. B squared is going to be 100 again minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a is 12. So again, go to the calculator and you're going to do the inside part. 100 minus 4 times 12 times negative 4. Be very careful and get all your negatives. That's 292. So scratch that, write that. You've got to do the square root of 292 next. And I don't know that one, so go to the calculator and do the square root of 292. And notice that's a weird, ugly-looking decimal. So the direction said round to three decimals, so let's round to three decimals. That square root is going to turn into 17.088. I have negative 10 plus or minus 17.088. Eight over two times twelve is twenty-four. Here's where I do the branching. 
top branch, you've got to do negative 10 plus 17.088. Negative 10 plus 17.088 is 7.088. Don't forget the denominator over 24. Seven point zero eight eight over twenty four, about point two nine five, and then I do the bottom branch when I subtract negative ten minus seventeen point zero eight eight is negative twenty seven point zero eight eight. Don't forget the over twenty four part, and feel free to use your calculator as much as you like there, but some of that you can do in your head. Negative twenty seven point zero eight eight divided by 24, about negative 1.129. Okay, cool. 15, basically the same thing. Um, we're rounding off negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Calculator 100 minus 4 times 10 times negative 14. 660. That's going to be my square root. Square root of 660. 25.690, negative 10 plus or minus 25.690, all over 2 times 10 is 20. Do the branches, top branch plus negative 10 plus, it's going to give me 15.690, don't forget over 20. Oops, not negative. 15.690 divided by 20.785. And bottom branch, when you subtract, that's negative 35.690 over 20. negative 1.75, 7.85. Again, whenever it's weird decimals like that, that means you couldn't have factored it. 17, use a quadratic formula to solve, giving exact answers, including radicals. So it's basically the same idea, except this time we don't want to use the calculator to get uh, decimals. We want radicals. So negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. Man, it's been 100 every time. That won't always be 100, but b is 10, so 10 squared is 100. 4 times a times c is negative 10, all over 2 times a. So I'm still using the calculator for this part. 100 minus 4 times 8 times negative 10. 420. The difference here is we have to try to find one of those perfect squares in the 420. Okay, so what goes into 420? Um, 100 does not. The 64. No. 36. Nope. Um, 16. No. 4. 105. Okay. That looks good. I'm going to have to do a square root of 420, and I'm going to split it into square root of 4 times square root of 105. So we learned in chapter 4.8 that that's going to give me 2 times the square root of 105. 
So let's rewrite this. Negative 10 plus or minus 2 times the square root of 105 all over 2 times 8 is 16. When we do the branching here, it's a little bit harder because we don't have like terms. So when you, when you add negative 10 plus 2 times the square root of 105 over 16, we don't, I mean, we, we don't really have uh, anything we can do yet. Let's do the bottom branch when you subtract negative 10 minus 2 square root of 105 over 16. Sometimes people will stop there, but it looks like we can we can reduce this. If you notice, when you split it, negative 10 over 16 plus 2 square root of 105. I know I'm stealing into the room for number 18, so make sure you write small. You can reduce that fraction. That reduces into um, like negative 5 eighths and 1 eighth. So we could say that's negative 5 eighths plus square root of 105 over 8. All right. Sometimes what people will do is they'll say, well, I can divide all those by 2. If I divide by 2, I'm going to get a 5 here and a 1 here and an 8 here. And so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Do the same thing over here. Divide everything by 5. You're going to get negative 5 minus square root of 105 over 8. And so we've got those. Next one, the numbers are a lot smaller, so hopefully this will be a lot easier. Negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. This time b is 2, so b squared is 4. Minus 4 times a is 1 times c is also this 4. All over 2 times a is 1, right? a is 1. So you might be able to do that one in your head, but no point. 4 minus 4 times 1 times 4 is negative 12. So when you see that negative under that square root, we know there's going to be an i. We have negative 2 plus or minus square root of negative 12 over 2. That's the square root of negative 12. We'd split that into a 4 and a 3 with an i on it, or 2i squared of 3. So we can say negative 2 plus or minus 2i squared of 3 over 2. Best thing you can do here is notice that all three of those numbers are divisible by 2. So that makes negative 1 plus or minus 1i squared of 3 over 1. But we don't need to say all those ones, so we might just say negative 1 plus or minus i times the square root of 3. If you want to split that top branch when you add, it's negative 1 plus i squared of 3. Bottom branch when you subtract, negative 1 minus i squared of 3. Quadratic formula. Now again, completing the square, quadratic formula, those are things that you can do when you can't factor. I look back at number 11, I could have factored that one, so I probably should have. It would have been faster. But if you look at all these messy decimals and square roots, you're not going to be able to factor those. So, you know, you might be thinking, well, why would I want to do this? Well, you're going to have to to find some of these answers. Good luck.